I'm reading from John 10, 22 through to 30. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple court walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you didn't believe. The works I do in my father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who's given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hands. I and the father are one. In these days between Easter and Pentecost, we've been exploring the appearances of the risen Lord. But now we take time to look at those passages that have spoken very clearly about these issues in John's gospel already. They help us to see the events and words which lead up to the cross, but importantly, give us insight into the fullest meaning of what these things mean to us. In John 10, in the early section, we hear Jesus describing himself as the good shepherd. And that thought continues in the second half of the chapter, also in two key verses, 27 and 28, where it's quite clear. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. I give them eternal life and they shall. Jesus is always the good shepherd. It's spoken about here, but it's a picture that goes right back in the heart of the Old Testament, uh, this picture of the shepherd who leads his sheep. And Jesus is the good shepherd. And those who belong to him will always be willing to be identified as his sheep. Not sheep in a, a, a kind of, you don't count for anything, you have to be looked after, but sheep because sheep and shepherds are deeply and profoundly related. The shepherd and sheep become the enduring pattern of Christian ministry. We still use that kind of terminology, talking about a priest or a minister will say, who are your flock? Well, that imagery clearly has its roots in this biblical image that we have here. It's not a weak or subservient model, but a picture of God's love spelled out for us in relationship. It shouldn't therefore surprise us that the Christian community is often referred to in this way. After he was raised from the dead, he will continue to be seen as the good shepherd. A good shepherd is one whose voice can be trusted, who knows the sheep of his flock. He calls us to care for others as he cares for us. I've always found it interesting, and I've lived in a number of places where, where sheep are so predominant in Wales as well as here in Australia. When I lived in those places, I found it strange to, to think that somebody who's acting as, as a shepherd uh, could actually know the differences between sheep. To an amateur like myself, they all look the same. But no, there is a distinctiveness. And it tells us as much about the shepherd as it does about the sheep. Not the differences between the sheep, but the compassionate care of the shepherd for his sheep. And you know, it's a lovely thing on, on Mother's Day when we're thinking about care and compassion and we're thinking about the importance of parents in life, women and men, people who care for, for children and families to recognise how important that care is. So when we think of the Christian community and we think of the risen Lord, we know that this shepherding care that is true in Jesus carries on not only in his ministry as he met them day by day, but after his death and resurrection. For he'll always be the shepherd of his sheep. And he'll always call us to a ministry that's very similar, of caring for others. And we learn week by week on this show of those who exercise ministry in reaching out to children and to young people to offer care. Lovely to see in some of those shots the importance of young children and how they're nurtured in life, hope and faith. So the Good Shepherd has so much to say to us. It's a profound picture of God's love and care, which is demonstrated in the ministry of Jesus. He's always going to be the Good Shepherd. It's really a good way of saying, it tells us in the Old Testament that there were bad shepherds. You only have to read it in Ezekiel that there were bad shepherds and good shepherds. He is the shepherd that will always be good. And he is the one that leads his sheep and we are his sheep still today.